going on? How's everyone doing? Just shout out to you. Everybody else who's cool with the power. Shepke! Got anything to say? Eat your popcorn. <laughs> and your Coca-Cola and relax. <laughs> anyway, tell Colin. I'm rich. What's going on? This is Colin. How's everybody doing? Happy Friday. We made it. End of the week. Hope you guys all have a great weekend. Hope you guys had a great week. All right. You guys want to watch some cord? I want to watch some cord. I've got, I've only got three clips for you today. They're all a little bit longer though, so don't worry. We still go for about an hour. First one, Judge Webster. This one was kind of crazy. It really was. And yeah. All right, you know what? <laughs> I'm just thinking about what to say about the clip, and let's just watch it together. Before I hit that play button, you already know what to do. Hit the like and subscribe. Do your jump kick backflips. Let's go. County attorney. Richard Paul, on behalf of Mr. Perez Bell, who appears by Zoom at a separate location in the council. All right, I have some other folks here I want to identify. Joseph Simon, what's your connection to the case? Judge, there are witnesses that are subpoenaed for okay. today. So he is a witness, and next to him is? Sydney with? Simon, I believe. She's subpoenaed as a witness as well. Is that Mr. Simon? Is that Sydney Simon beside you? Uh, my wife's next to me. What's her name? Kimberly Simon. Kimberly. Is Sydney there or anywhere to be seen? I seen her come into the meeting. Okay. Kimberly. I see someone on iPhone. Who's on the iPhone? The young lady with the long hair and the black hat. I'm Sydney. Okay. Yes, I'm Sydney. Okay, and you've been subpoenaed to be here. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh. So we are set today for preliminary hearing. This is not the first time we've had a hearing, and I see we've just been joined by Deputy Fisher. I presume he's a witness, too? Yes, Your Honor. Now, this case, the first appearance was August 15th of 23, and the defendant said he was going to hire an attorney at that time. Then September 29th of 23, he said he didn't want a court-appointed attorney, says he was self-employed but hadn't filed a 21 or 22 tax return and didn't know how much he made per month. He said he made at least 70,000 reportable income the previous year. So he convinced me not to appoint him an attorney and that he could handle it. Then November 17th to 23, he came in and said he had still not retained counsel. He planned on Marianne Shirley, but had changed his mind and was going to hire someone else. So there's three hearings in 23 that he's pretty much said the same thing. I'm hiring an attorney. He came in January 5th of 24, told the uh, then presiding Judge Murphy that he was preceding to hire an attorney. So that's four hearings in about five months. February 16th the 24, he was in person and with attorney Richard Paw. He had actually hired an attorney, a very uh, one who is very familiar to the court, very capable, very qualified, and very diligent for his clients. Then we came back. Then I have a note, February 29th, from the clerk, or my, I'm sorry, from Missy says, I received a call from Anthony Bill stating Sidney Simon has been driving by his house, honking, liking his Facebook and TikTok posts, and she texted him. Also, he stated she wouldn't give him his kids this week, and uh, Missy told him to call his attorney, that they could consider calling law enforcement about harassment. If he felt like he was being stalked, he could file a PFS. So that brings us up to date, I think. No, we were here April 17th. Let's see. 
Two days ago, Missy got a phone call. We weren't here. It was a phone call from the defendant. He um, what are the charges? That's a good question. I don't know if they actually say. They don't get into the case. This goes on for about 25 minutes and they don't get into the case. You'll see why. He wanted a change of venue. Again, he was referred to his attorney. He said his attorney didn't agree with the change of venue. She told him he hired his attorney. If he didn't like the way his attorney was handling the case, he could do it differently. Uh, but she did tell him a motion for change of venue needed to be filed if that was what was going to be pursued and it would be ruled on. He also asked for the pending case numbers for his other court dates and cases. Apparently he has some not only here in Greenwood, but Elk as well. Now, Miss, he says he doesn't think he'll be dealt with fairly and that Mr. Paul makes a lot of money off Greenwood County appointments. And Miss Shirley has stated that Jill Gillette doesn't like him. And he, I presume the defendant, says to Missy he has a personal relationship with Jill Gillette's boyfriend, David, and that he, maybe the defendant, remodeled David's house a few years ago. And he knows they have discussed his cases. I presume, and that's all it is, a presumption, he means Miss Gillette and her, her boyfriend. So let's see. I think the first order of business is a change of venue. I'm denying that at least at this point for preliminary hearing. If you're not bound over, you won't need the motion. If you are bound over, you can take that up before the next judge. But I see no reason why we should change venue for preliminary hearing. He also, so are you saying you want to remove Miss Gillette as the prosecutor? Because tell me why. I feel like I'm judge, saying judge, fair judge. judgment, okay, Your you're, Honor. Well, whoa, whoa, yeah, you're right. Go ahead, Mr. Let's hear you, Mr. Paul. Judge, I, I, I sent an email to court and counsel this morning. I've been in court the last uh, couple of days. Earlier this week, I believe it was Wednesday, when Mr. Uh, Perez Bell uh, called the court, he had asked me to withdraw on those cases on on his case. Um, I believe it comes down to a to a, a breakdown in communication. Uh, my my assistant's been out, so I haven't been able to file that motion. But I'm doing that as an oral motion, Judge. And uh, if if you grant that, then I would uh, like to no longer be in the proceedings for today. Actually, uh, I am going to deny the motion to allow Mr. Pa to withdraw for this hearing. This defendant has been telling me he was going to hire an attorney since August 15th to 23. He's told me that over and over again, and he finally did it, and I'm going to hold him to it, at least for this hearing. We have the witnesses subpoenaed, and we're ready to go, so. Uh, judge, I judge, I would, you know, based on this, I do not feel comfortable going forward for Mr. Mr. Perez Bell. I would like to speak. Just hold on. All right. Yeah. I I get the attorney's point. Like, yeah, we, we talked last week and he pretty much fired me. So I stopped working on this case. I didn't know that, you know, he's been pushing this case. I know he probably does. He's probably looked at the, the court record for this case. But yeah, if he if he's not prepared, how do you go forward? He's got a good point. Also, this guy's kind of a dick. Come on, Anthony. I want to. I want to speak. I want to say what I want to say. He's already told me that he does not want me to do this hearing, and I. I, I had a I personal. To me. Mr. Anthony, let me speak. Mr. Bell, let Mr. Paul speak. Judge, and you know when he when he told me Wednesday, honestly, Judge, I quit working on his case. So, because he told me he was gonna, he didn't want me working on his case anymore. So I, 
I take my clients at their word and this isn't some kind of delay tactic. We have had a definite breakdown in communication, Judge. So, you know, if you're keeping me on for today, I, I, I know the witnesses has, have been subpoenaed. I hate to put the county attorney through that, but everybody's appearing by Zoom. Nobody's, nobody's had to drive to the courthouse. And I would ask for a short continuance to file my motion, have it ruled on formally, and uh, go forward at that point. And if, and if you will not let me off of the case, then I will have adequate time to prepare because basically I was fired Wednesday, Judge. You were not fired. It was a mutual decision. Well. Okay. First of well, all, Mr. Perez Bell, you are not in charge here. You probably think you are because you've delayed this case so long and kept it from going to even the preliminary hearing. No, ma'am, I Stop. do not talk back to me. This has been going on, like I said, since August, and you keep coming in here hearing after hearing after hearing, telling me you're going to get an attorney, telling me you don't want a, port a court appointed attorney. And you told me I did not qualify for a court appointed attorney. Well, you told me you made $70,000 a year. Do you want me to lie? Nope. But if you're making seventy thousand a year, you can afford your own attorney instead of socking it to the taxpayers, don't you think? And I and I hired one, and then I hired them. Let's go. Why? Why? No, ma'am. No, no, ma'am. I, I want a change of venue. I feel like I'm faced unfair judgment. I spoke to Daniel, Miss Gillette's boyfriend, personally at the tire shop. He admitted to them to discussing my case in the privacy of their own home. I have a personal relationship with him. Miss Marianne Shirley told me Miss Gillette does not like me. And from all the cases I'm getting thrown on at me afterwards, it ought to it ought to show what kind of games are being played here from the state side. Mrs. Miss Simon has sent two people after me to try and get my butt whooped. One of them's name is Alan Greenwood, the other one's name is Tyler Stafford. She keeps driving by my house harassing me. Um, I made a Facebook post the other day. She's tried logging into my Facebook, my Snapchat. She keeps liking everything on TikTok. Okay. She has okay. logged into my Stop. All right. I mean, she keeps liking all of his posts on TikTok. She is harassing you. I agree. You know, she's driving by your house. I mean, does she have to? I mean, maybe it's part of her trip. I don't know. But out of, you know, the person that's sitting there calm and collective, and then this guy, who do you think is, uh, who do you think the judge is going to believe? But yeah, but she is absolutely harassing you for liking your videos on TikTok. Poor guy. Uh, while I am paused, I don't want to forget. Kayla, thank you. Hi, Heather. You are awesome. Heather is awesome. And thank you, Kayla. Judge, may I address some of the issues, please? Uh, I was getting ready to ask you your opinion, please do. Judge, he did remodel Mr. Green's home. Mr. Green has nothing to do with my job. Mr. Beal has been in Mr. Green's shop multiple times demanding that he talk to me about his case. I have instructed Mr. Green when we first started dating, anyone that shows up to your shop and mentions anything that has to do with my job, your response is, I have nothing to do with her job. Mr. Beal has been in there multiple times. Mr. Green's been instructed that Mr. Beal, if he comes in there to tell him, I have nothing to do with her job. You'll have to call her office and deal with her office. I have said that I do not want Mr. Beal to come by the house because I don't feel comfortable with him. Mr. Beal has made numerous posts about the Elk County Sheriff, the Greenwood County Sheriff, myself, and other people on his Facebook. I am aware of them. People screenshot them, show them to me, and make me aware of them. Mr. Beal brought his actions upon himself. I treat him the same as any other defendant. In fact, I have other defendants that have had way more cases in front of me than he has um, and in front of the courts. It does not create a personal conflict of interest because I don't know Mr. Beal. I have no relationship with Mr. Beal other than the fact that he remodeled 
the guy I'm dating's house. Um, with that Basically. being said, it has no bearing on this. And that is the only two things that it, he's been told is that he's not allowed here um, because of the stuff he's posted on Facebook. Um, there's no social media there is from anyone here. There's no newspaper articles that would require a transfer of venue. Mr. Beal does not understand the intricacies of a change of venue motion nor its um, requirements. Mr. Paul does understand. You take that back right now, Jonathan. There's no way he talks more than I do during court. Come on. That's my trophy, and I'm proud of it. What a change of venue is required. And a change of venue would not be appropriate in this matter because Mr. Paul's correct. It doesn't meet the requirements of a change of venue. There's no media, there's no bias, there's no anything in the community. And if it goes to jury trial, there's not been enough media to require a change of venue. Defendants don't always know what the exact intricacies of the law are, and they hear of things such as a change of venue and think that it would apply in their case when their lawyer knows the best about the law. I was a defense attorney for years, and I had to deal with the very same issue with my own clients over and over again, and I would tell them the same thing and break down the law for them that a change of venue isn't appropriate. I don't have a personal conflict with Mr. Beal. I really don't have an opinion of him other than what I read in the affidavits that are come before me. And I base my decisions on the affidavits before me and the circumstances regarding each case and the number of cases that are before me when I make agreements, pleas, or decisions for trial. None of that has anything to do with anything personal. I don't know why he keeps saying Marianne said something like that, but Ms. Shirley's a very qualified attorney, and I don't know what was in their private conversation. At the point that that came up in one of his very first hearings, I hadn't even really discussed him in front of Ms. Shirley. Mr. Beal does have a case in Elk County that I did prosecute, and he does have a conviction in that case, and I am aware of that case. But having prior cases with the same defendant does not disqualify a prosecutor. Yeah, I am. Daniel, yeah, sir, stop. I, yeah, sir, I told you, you do here. not control this hearing. I have my freedom of speech. Daniel's name is not brought up. Of, sir, yeah. you do not have the right to say anything you want, anytime you want, in this court. You will speak when you're asked questions and given the opportunity to speak. But you're not going to just keep interrupting and and telling the court what you think. Mr. Paul, your motion to uh, withdraw is granted. Now, what are we gonna do about you and your attorney, Mr. Perez Bill? I've been using this excuse that you don't have an attorney for a year now. What are, what are you gonna do? J Judge, may I be excused? You are excused, Mr. Paul. Again, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. You're welcome. I am requesting a continuance so I can hire another attorney. Mr. Paul has given me a name of somebody he recommends. But on the record, Your Honor, Mr. Paul, he is the one who let me know about Daniel, about the attorney, about the county attorney, Mrs. Gillette. And Daniel, her boyfriend, speaking about me in the privacy of their ho own home. All right. Um, how would your attorney know that? How? In the privacy of their own home, he, your attorney just happened to know that they talk about you. That, that makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. And it's very funny that you happen to say that right when your well, former attorney just left. So he can't defend what you're saying. This guy's awesome. He's really smart. Mr. Paul's the one who brought that to my attention. Well, I don't Mr. know. How Mr. Mr. Paul, Mr. Paul was told to have Mr. Beal stop going into Mr. Green's place of business to discuss the case. Mr. Paul and I talked about that, and he was to relay to Mr. Beal to stay out of Daniel's shop and trying to get information about his case through Mr. Green. 
Mr. Green. I was not doing that. Nothing right, to do stop. with this face. Okay, okay, everybody stop. All right. Let's get this. Uh, you know, I'm tempted to make you go to prelim today without an attorney because you can't just keep coming in here saying, I want a continuance, I want a continuance, and not go to the hearing. Frankly, Judge, if he wants to continue to harass the guy I'm dating, that's intimidation of the county attorney, yeah. and it could result in new charges. So he needs to stop trying to go in there and talk to him and have no contact with any member right. of my family or extended family. I went in there one All time right. to teach him about our case. Stop, or I'm going to make you come to court where I can have an officer put you in custody for contempt if you keep interrupting and taking over like you're doing. Now, I've let your attorney off the hook, but I want to know who you're hiring in his place. I can't, I have his name written down on a piece of wood at work. It's an attorney from El, uh, El Dorado. I was told to, sorry, long, my phone messed up. How long is this attorney going to take to get ready for preliminary hearing? I'm not sure. I asked Mr. Paul if he'd be willing to speak to him and get him up to date on my case, and he said he would. But Mr. Paul told me, let's get through this first. You actually posted your bond July I said, 9th. You know that? You posted your bond July 9th of 23. You didn't have an attorney enter until J January 12th of 24, and now by April 19th of 24, you're back to no attorney again. Mrs. I planned on hiring Mrs. Shirley, I think two times, and Why she told you? she told me she didn't want to do it. All right. She referred me to Mr. Paul. I finally got through to Mr. Paul, but then there's been three accounts now that Mr. Paul told me I'll call you on such and such day. I'll call you on such and okay, such day. Okay. That's Never not helping any. That's not helping me any. I want to know who you're hiring, when you're hiring them, and when I can set this for real hearing. I don't know the name of the guy off the top of my head, but he's out of El Dorado. Where's and his I office have to speak. Where's his office located? I don't know. I told you I have his name and number written down at work. Oh, you've never talked to him? No. I, last time I spoke to Mr. Paul, he referred me to him. And I believe that was maybe two days ago, and it's written down at work. I was on the job when I got his name and number. But Mr. Paul said, let's get through this first before I hire another attorney. Get through what? The withdrawal? Yes, ma'am. Miss Gillette. Hey, go play for a minute. What? Would you go play for a minute? I'll be right there, okay? Um. Ms. Gillette, how long would it take you? How soon can you get these witnesses back for prelim again? Judge, if you're going to continue their subpoenas and require they be at the next date and give the date today so that they know when it is, um, then we can do it at their availability. I know that some of them have taken off work to be present or maybe hours. Well, that's what I'm thinking. I'm, I'm really inclined to just go ahead and do the preliminary hearing. Because he's had so many times to have an attorney here, and he had one, and he got rid of him. If we're going to continue it, was it I would, decision. if we're going to continue it, I would ask for approximately thirty days. Because again, I have to send them new subpoenas, Judge. Um, I can't but if they know that, bound, like you said, under their existing subpoenas. Yeah, and we know where they are. Yeah, no, you're right. If he was in jail right now. He wouldn't be doing the delay tactics. He'd be going the exact opposite of that. Hurry, 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 hurry. Are I mean, oh. it's not like they're moving around. They're all in the area. The Sydney Simon is his uh, was his significant other. I know there's a divorce that's is been pending the, or maybe granted. Is she the alleged victim? Actually, Mr. Simon's one of the alleged victims. What do you think about just uh, just doing the prelim today without an attorney since he's had so many opportunities? 
Are you talking to me? No, I'm talking to Ms. Gillette. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Judge, if we go through with the prelim today, I just don't know how Mr. Beal um, will know the intricacies of the law and questioning witnesses and allowing questions and testimony. Thank you. Solid year you've had, and you, how do I know this is going to be any different than all the other times? Because I don't have much choice here. My future is at stake. <clears throat> what was it? Yeah, right, 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 and one was wrong, Your Honor. When I read through the discovery that Mr. Paul granted me, Joe, Kim, and Sydney, and Miss Officer Fisher, <laughs> all three of them lied. Right is right and wrong is wrong, and I want a proper chance to defend myself. Judge, perhaps we should set a um, PHC date on April 26th, one week from today, to see what progress he has to hiring an attorney. And that way, we keep on the short stick of getting a new attorney for him on board, and then we can set a preliminary hearing control, or actual prelim, with that attorney present. I'm not sure that'll give me enough time to gather funds to hire the attorney. I will speak to him today, see what it's going to cost. Well, you should, you should get, get a money. refund of any money that you didn't use from Mr. Paul, I'm sure. I don't know what your contract was. I'm going, Mr. To, I'm going to set this over for one week. Be back here by Zoom at 1.30 with your attorney, and I want you live in the courthouse. Not in your car, not at your job, live in the Greenwood County Courthouse. Now, if you have an attorney, if you have an attorney and he wants to appear by Zoom, he can do so. But I want you in the courthouse. Now, and that would be live in court in front of you. <clears throat> I'll be in the courthouse. Now then, uh, to the witnesses, you do not have to be back here. That's not going to be that type of hearing. But if you want to, you're certainly welcome to be either on the, the Zoom call like we're doing now or uh, watch by YouTube or whatever you and Miss Gillette work out. But we need to get it resolved one way or another. We will. I want to get this done and behind me. Yeah, but the truth's yeah. the truth, Your Honor. We're facing a lot of unfair judgment. Lies, lies have been told on that. When I read that discovery, Mr. it's nothing but a lie. Lewis, or Mr. Mr. Jones, we're going to have a real yeah. problem. I'm sorry. A Paris bill. Yeah. Yes, I know who it is. Hold on. Mr. Perezmiel, you and I need to under, have an understanding that there are certain times defendants speak, there are certain times prosecutors speak, there are certain times witnesses speak, and there are certain times judges speak. All of our conversations are recorded and they are subject to being typed up into records by court reporters. If we're all talking at once, that reporter is not going to have a very good time trying to try type the transcript. So in the future, control your urge to burst out because we're not going to keep doing that. All There's right. nobody more frustrated than an innocent man. Well, you may be innocent, but you're still going to follow the court rules. And yes, ma'am. You're going to follow the rules and the procedures. So, all right. We'll be in recess. Your Honor, may I, what? May I say something, Your Honor? Go ahead. One week is not going to give me time to, to acquire the funds to hire this attorney. You could afford Mr. Paul, but you cannot afford. Thank you for pointing that out, Amanda. I wanted to, to say that earlier in the video to watch her reaction just about every time this dude opened his mouth. She's laughing. She's, you know, shaking her head. Yeah, it's kind of funny to watch. Toward another attorney? Not, it's not going to give me time 
to gather the funds to hire a new attorney. All right. Miss Missy C.F. William McClendon can take an appointment. I'm going to appoint an attorney. You don't have to use him, but he better be here and he be, better be ready to go. Where did the defendant go? Is he Samsung? Yes, he is. Okay, Mr. Perez, be all you need to turn your screen on. I can't give you credit for being in court if you don't come to court and stay at court until your turn is over. Mr. Perez, I'm going to have to issue a warrant for your arrest if you do not join us, Mr. Perez. And he's gone. I'm guessing he lost signal. You think he lost signal or he just didn't like what he was hearing? <clears throat> or, or is it even fair to guess? I don't He's had bad connections before, Judge. I make notes when there's technical issues in his different files over his different cases. Missy, appoint Mr. He, okay, uh, I just got a message from the clerk's office. He just called and said his phone died. Well, he must have gotten it back if he called the clerk's office. Must have been totally dead. That's an excuse that I never understand. People um, say it all the time in court. Oh, my phone's about to die. Can we call my case now? Or they'll be in the middle of talking like, oh, my phone's on 5%. You're in court. If you're going to be on Zoom, be on Zoom. But you should be prepared. I I don't understand. I guess sometimes you have to wait a long time. You know, when you know you, it says 9 a.m. and you go in there and you find out that there's 20 people on the docket and you might have to sit there for two hours. I guess still. If you're going to be on your phone, you bet you need to be prepared. He's trying to download Zoom on a different device. Oh. What behind are we getting because of, we could have had the hearing over by now. We'll be in recess on Perez be all. Uh, Mr. Ambrose, are you ready on Bradley Smith? I believe Mr. Smith's at 2.30, um, and he's okay. going to be 2.30, and then Ms. Stubbs is going to be 2.45. Okay. So you don't have any Good luck on your surgery, Terry, and I absolutely will be covering this guy next week. Do you mind releasing all my witnesses, please, for yeah. the Perez Beal hearing? That'd be fine. Thank you. Current bond. Rod has his current bond at seventy five. Did that mean Joseph and Sydney? You guys can go. They can stay if they want to, though. Okay, they can stay if they want. All right. I apologize, Your Honor. My phone died. Okay, well, that's another good reason why if you're at the courthouse, you won't have to worry about that. Uh, I was getting close to revoking your bond, thinking you'd bailed intentionally, but you haven't. So I'll continue your bond with all existing conditions. I'm appointing attorney William McClendon, if he can take the case. If not, Missy maybe can find someone else. And we're going to have this uh, April 27 at 1.30 for your next hearing. If you can hire another attorney, you're welcome to do it. Anything else? Uh, no contact with any witnesses or victims, and the victims and witnesses better not have any contact with him either. Judge, did you say you were going to appoint William McClendon, but he may have to pay for his services? That's what okay. I said. And uh, stay away as a condition of bond. Stay away from uh, Daniel. What's the last name, Miss Gillette? Mr. Green, Your Honor. Stay away from Daniel Green, his shop, his home, wherever he may be. I do business there. 
Well, you're going to probably have to do business somewhere else. What kind of business do you do there? Tires. Tires. He's the, man tires he's left the manager. Out. He's the manager of the Severy Co-op Tire Shop. Is there no other tire shop that you can go to? I. That's where my account is. Now there's. I know there are tire stores in Eureka, and they're not very far from there. I un I understand that, but as many tires as many tires as I go through in my line of work, I have a charge account there. If I have a tire blow out on a trailer or a truck, I I either go in or help goes in and gets it taken care of. Well, Mr. Perez Beal, for now you're gonna have to do something for oh, somebody else. What? He could, he could send one I of can his deal with somebody else with I can deal with his brother or the help. But please don't make this any more difficult than it already has been. You're the one making it difficult, man. This is all your fault. This will be finished. This happened a year ago. And you're not even to your preliminary hearing yet. So we get, now we got to wait another week. Ah, oh, this guy, this guy. Ah, it's frustrating. All right, it's almost over, though. Sir, I haven't made this anything. Uh, I'm the one that's upset that it's taking so long to get it resolved. But I'm telling you to stay away from that gentleman and, and uh, work something else out. You know, you're not the first person that's been in this bind and had to have no contact orders, even though they were inconvenient. And stay away from Miss Gillette and her office. You go through your attorney. Your attorney wouldn't want you down there talking to them and calling them either. So make sure you understand my rules and you follow them, or you can sit in jail until we get through this. Can I still with can I still deal with the place of business, just not Daniel? Can you not talk about your case with any of them? Yes, ma'am. Miss Gillette, what's your response to that? I don't know if these people want him in their shop. Maybe they do. I've been friends with him a long time. If he stops through there and he deals with either Luke or one of the other guys, I don't have a problem with that. Thank but you. But no discussing his case, no discussing my job. My job is my job. My personal life is my personal life, and I... I've explained that to Mr. Green when we first started dating. My ex-husband was an attorney and understood that, but my current New person I'm dating is not legal, does not understand the legal process. Okay. Well, Mr. Perez, Bill, I hope you understand enough the process to follow the terms of your bond so you don't have to get locked back up. And, and if this young lady or somebody's calling him, I'm going to tell you to stop it. Nothing good can come of that. Do you two have children in common? Yes, yes ma'am. We have three. Okay, but you're going through someone else to exchange them for visits? For the longest time, we were going through the babysitter who she filed a PFA against That's me. That's right. The babysitter got a PFA too, didn't she? Yeah, how does that how does that work? I show up to get my children on a day when I was supposed to get them. My ex-wife decided to keep the children from me. And I take pride in being a dad. I love being a dad. And there's been nothing but games played with my children left and right ever since. I was supposed to get them this past Tuesday. I didn't get them until, I didn't get the older two until yesterday. You need to take that up in another court. That's what part of this case. So at this time we'll be in recess. You can go if you can follow the rules of the bond. If you can't, tell me now. I can. So we are April 27th at 1.30. Will no, you haven't. be moving? I wrote down April 26th. Missy, which is it? It is April 26th and that's Friday. Next Friday at 1.30. <laughs> hmm. Will I get information about this attorney you have appointed? <laughs> Missy, why don't you give him his name and number? I look, can I email it to you? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Can you use the BD construction email? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Missy. All right. 
In fact, I'm just going to make it a blanket that you stay away from all the judicial staff except for your attorney, unless you are doing business, essential business. Because Missy does. Uh, Judge Webster appointed him an attorney when he got disconnected. She doesn't want him to come in and say, I wasn't able to hire one. So she appointed him an attorney with uh, the stipulation that he has to pay for the attorney. But she's like, no, I'm appointing this attorney for you. And you're probably going to have to pay this attorney. But you're now you have one. So that's what happened. But that happened a few minutes ago. Now they're just he's just trying to get the information from the about uh, the attorney's information. Doesn't need to be dragged into any of these phone calls, take even taking messages. All right, so we're in recess. You all may go. I wasn't ready for it to end that quickly. Um, all right, next one. I don't remember the name of this court. It's not one that I always watch, but it, the court was kind of slow today. There wasn't all, a lot of the usual courts weren't on, so. I uh, kind of stumbled on this one, and yeah, not a bad case. Interesting. Their Zoom, their Zoom is set up kind of weird, though. This is this is what it's going to look like the entire time, so it's not easy to see, but you can hear just fine. We'll go on record and file 24-10007-FH, people of the state of Michigan versus Cody Allen, is it Chaffee? Yes. All right. Mr. Chaffee is in court here uh, today. Uh, I didn't mean, yeah, the DDC was, was nice today. It was, I watched that a little bit too. I'm saying in general, a lot of the courts weren't on YouTube today. So generally I, I watch about 20 to 25 courts a day. I think I only had about 10 to 12 today. So the volume was low, but the content was there. Uh, for sentencing on the charge of resisting a federal police officer operating while intoxicated, uh, here represented by attorney Robert Drake and from the prosecutor's office, system prosecuting attorney Ronnie. This matter is on the docket for sentencing. I did receive and review the pre-sentence investigation report uh, and the uh, sentencing information report that was prepared by uh, agent Browning and I also received a restitution request. Uh, uh, let me just ask, uh, I'm assuming the restitution request probably came from your office. So have you received the, all the documentation? We have received the documentation and had a chance to review it. Uh, there is one uh, possible correction uh, and maybe a misprint or maybe it is correct. On the uh, page two of the report, the pre-sentence investigation report uh, in the recommendation line, it indicates the recommendation of probation for one month and six days. Which yeah. is an unusual number, so that stuck out. So I didn't know if that and was I think supposed was, to read. There might even be one other report here today that had the same thing. I think that was last week. It was, yeah. yeah, I think it was yeah. last week, which yeah. is why it stuck out. So I, I, I think it was. It was the rec it should be one year, six months. That's what what I would yeah. assume. That was what their recommendation yeah. was. So. But other than that, no objections or corrections. All right. Um, Don't get too excited because the the clip after this. The audio, the audio is not that great. It, you can hear them fine, but there's a lot of like buzzing feedback, and it's kind of annoying. Just to, but that's the next clip. Attorney Drake, did you get a chance to review all the information I referenced? I did, Your Honor, and I had an opportunity to discuss the matter with Mr. Uh, Chafee yesterday, and uh, today provided him with a paper copy for his file. Uh, we also got a restitution request that I uh, explained to Mr. Chafee as part of this, and we have no additions or corrections. And let me just, uh, I'm assuming that um, because the pre-sentence investigation report, at least as part of the recommendations, recommended 5,000 restitution, but then we got the request from your office for the 300 for the damage. So I'm assuming uh, that that there was not some request for five thousand. That that was the the three hundred would was what that was. Because I just I wanted uh, I didn't have any and I was going to address that because I didn't have any you know paperwork on that. Uh, I did have the you know I don't have any problem with the municipal league uh, uh, matter, but I, I had some questions on the other. 
So regarding that initial number, I think that was an initial number that may have been presented. Uh, our victim witness coordinator had some conversations with the homeowners and uh, about what was allowable or appropriate. And this is the 300 that was recommended or requested uh, is the appropriate amount we believe. So that is what we would be requesting. Okay, so there was, there's, so the other was just not even gonna be uh, explored here today. Correct. Okay, I just want everybody to be aware of that. Uh, and then Attorney Drake, then uh, anything else you wanted to add, uh, at least to the uh, reports? No, I was going to bring up the same one month, six day uh, issue because we dealt with it last week. I assume that's just a, a, a ghost in the machine, as they say. So uh, other than that, there's nothing. All right. Mr. Chaffee, uh, Chaffee, did you get a chance to review the report with yes, your sir. attorney? Were there any additions or corrections no, that sir. you wanted to make? All right. Attorney Ryan, then we'll hear from uh, recommendations from your office. I'm going to then hear from your attorney, Mr. Chaffee, uh, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity. This plea is a result of a uh, caliber of sentencing agreement uh, with no additional jail time of sentence. I do note when I review the pre-sentence report that uh, there was at least two law enforcement contacts after uh, the plea in this case. One had been dismissed and one is a DWLS. Uh, even with those, Your Honor, I know the court does have the, then the authority to uh, not follow through with the uh, Kilbrew agreement. Uh, so we would leave that to the court's discretion, but we would not be asking for that based upon the fact that the, one of the files was dismissed, which is unusual for a drunk driving case. I imagine there must have been something, an issue with that. And uh, uh, on the DWLS, we don't have enough information. I, I would, though, indicate that uh, Mr. Chaffee needs to, if the court does go through with the agreement, that the, Mr. Chaffee needs to appreciate the fact that. Uh, it's a gift because the whole point of the agreement is that uh, you know you're going to behave yourself and not get arrested anymore uh, and so you earn that 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 uh, reduction and uh, even driving while license suspended or if there was a drunk driving all those things would completely negate that so based upon what i've read we would not be asking for that uh, but we do recognize it's in the court's discretion uh, so we leave the uh, the rest of the sentencing uh, details to the court's discretion yeah, I was I was actually confused. I thought you were talking about this guy. Um, yeah, I don't really think this guy says anything. Now his actions are, you know, what? Yeah, stop drinking and driving. But yeah, Tony Gary. Well, yeah, uh, as uh, the prosecutor indicated, um, you know, the one matter in Indiana was dismissed and the other matter is driving while license suspended. Uh, the uh, admonishment from the prosecution uh, is, you know, heard and well taken. Uh, for the record, Mr. Chafee is here with, uh, you know, another person uh, who brought him here. Uh, he resides with his mother and stepfather, I believe. And uh, he, you know, I point out that he uh, lists off uh, a few uh, both mental and physical health issues that uh, he doesn't have a doctor and isn't getting uh, treatment for. Uh, I think that those certainly contribute to some of the uh, decision making that goes on in this matter. Uh, the uh, probation recommendation falls within principled outcomes of a zero to 17. Uh, guidelines, and for those reasons, I'd ask the court to adopt the sentencing recommendation. Thank you. Mr. Jack, anything you want to say to the court? No, sir. Well, Mr. Chaffee, on uh, December 23rd of last year, approximately 11. All right. I, it's, this has been a straightforward case right now. The reason I put it in this video is because the judge just kind of goes off on him right now. No one really said anything, but the judge is not happy with this guy. 15, Cascana Sheriff's Department, Sergeant Shields observed your truck drive off the road on M62 and cast off this into some trees near a pond. Uh, when he went to investigate, you were trying to get the truck unstuck and the officer instructed you to turn the vehicle off, but you continued revving the engine. The officer could smell intoxicants, observed that your eyes were watery, your speech was somewhat incoherent. When questioned, you admitted having a little to drink that night. You were asked to perform field sobriety tests, which you refused, which is your right. You were advised of your preliminary breath test rights, which you refused, PBT, which again is your right. The officer then advised you that you were under arrest and you responded, no, sir, and then proceeded to walk away. The officer eventually had to wrestle you to the ground. You resisted attempts to be cuffed. The officer eventually employed his taser, which you continued to resist. The officer was eventually able to get your right hand cuffed and then backup arrived and took custody of you. 
As a result of the struggle, Sergeant Shields was transported to the hospital for medical attention. You were taken to the hospital also uh, for a blood draw and your results were 0.166, which was over twice the legal limit. Mr. Chaffee, you're 29 years old, and because of your foolish and unnecessary actions, if you'd have just cooperated, you wouldn't be sitting in front of this court right now, being in district court. I tell people all the time, just cooperate with the police. You may not like it, but when you fight them, it always gets worse. You're now sitting up here in front of a circuit court. It can send you to jail for a long time, as opposed to being down in district court looking at a 93-day misdemeanor. So you put yourself in that. And uh, when I look at it, uh, this is your first felony conviction on your record, uh, and uh, with your foolish actions also uh, looks like it caused you a boatload of restitution to pay. And when I look at the report, I don't know why you weren't charged with felony uh, operating while intoxicated, because it looks like he has two prior convictions in Indiana, one from 2022. Uh, it shows uh, uh, both in 2022 and you were unsuccessfully discharged from probation on one of those in January of this year. Also note that you've continued to thumb your nose at the system by driving uh, when you're not supposed to and you have a pending court date in June on that charge in Elkhart. Prosecutor still isn't recommending and you need to understand when you're in court and they make a plea agreement and they recommend that, uh, uh, you know, no jail, that when part of that it requires that you not violate the law. And as the prosecutor pointed out, when you do violate the law subsequent to that plea, I'm not bound to that plea agreement. You understand that? Understood. Now, at the time of the plea, the prosecutor agreed to no additional jail time, and um, he t again indicated that in here today. And so you better thank your attorney. And you're lucky stars, Mr. Chaffee, because without that agreement, you'd receive no less than nine months from me today. So I hope you appreciate where you are. I don't care if you have a decent job and you have a significant other. If you want to keep your job and spend time with your significant other, then you better grow up, change your ways. Because your days of drinking and driving and playing tough guy with the police better end today. If I see you back, even for jaywalking, you bring a toothbrush. Yes, sir. Because without that prosecutor say telling me today that he's not recommending jail, you'd be gone today. You'd be leaving out that door. You're not the tough guy in this courtroom, Mr. Chappie. No, I'm not. You're just not. You know what that means? You better realize that if you're not the tough guy in the courtroom, you're not a tough guy when you're out dealing with the police either. Because that's only going to bring you into a courtroom. And you know who the tough guy is in the courtroom when it comes to sentencing? You. Me. And so stop playing tough guy with the police. Because when you're playing tough guy with the police, you're playing tough guy with the court. And guess what? You're going to lose that one every time. Yeah, Fozzie, I, I like that. The line the judge said, if you, if you, if you even get caught jaywalking, better bring a toothbrush because you're going to jail. Next time the police say, if there is one, that you're under arrest, I'm going to give you a little coaching here if you need it. The correct answer is yes, sir, not no, sir. Understood. Or you'll be here in front of me. Now, your case is going to be transferred to Indiana for supervision. You're living in Indiana, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. But if you violate probation, you need to, come, you need to realize that the violate, any violation will come back in front of me. You understand that? Yes, sir. So I talked to your attorney, Mr. Chavy. He'll tell you I'm a man of my word. And if I see you back in here, don't push you up. And if I see you back in here, plan on going out the back door, okay? Understood. So what I'm going to do on the count two charge of resisting obstructing a police officer it will be the sentence court to be placed on probation for two years on the terms and conditions of probation outlined in the PSI, pre-sentence investigation report, to pay a supervision fee of $720 to the rate approved by your agent. I'm going to serve three days cash county jail with credit for three days served. She'll undergo a substance abuse and her mental health assessment directed by your agent following your recommended course of treatment. 
as a convicted felon, you may it must not use or possess a prohibited weapon. You shall pay $68 in the minimum state costs, a crime victim rights assessment of $130, court costs in the amount of $500, which the court deems reasonable based on the average cost of prosecuting a case here in the county. You can also urge to pay $350 in attorney fees to partially reimburse the cost of providing you legal services in this matter, and I'm going to pay a fine of, of uh, $1,000. I'm going to also order to comply with DNA testing, pay the associated $60 fee, and I'm also going to order to pay restitution in the amount of $1,500 for the benefit of the Michigan Municipal uh, League Workers' Compensation Fund, and in the amount of $300 uh, to, for the benefit of Bradley and Stacy Rock. On the count three charge of operating while intoxicated, it's a sentence court. You serve three days Cass County Jail with credit for three days served. You pay a fine of $500, and you pay admission and you pay minimum state costs of $50. And um, uh, I'm going to also order, as required by statute under Michigan Compiled Laws 257-904D, that your vehicle be immobilized as mandated by law for a period of one year. So there will be an order uh, done, and you'll need, we'll, need to, you'll, we'll need to get those orders prepared for the immobilization, and um, your vehicle will be immobilized. You still have your 2012 Grace Chevy Silverado? Mm -hmm. That's going to be mobilized for a year, and you're not to drive. Okay. You have, you have a dri driving law license suspended pending. Yes. Well, if you get arrested for driving that vehicle, mm -hmm. it's to be immobilized for a period of one year. Will my father be able to drive that vehicle? If his no, name's on the it'll be immobilized. <coughs> and that's one thing you need to realize. Mm -hmm. When you do the things that you do, there are consequences, big consequences. So if you have a job, fiance, you maybe want to concentrate on those things and not the things that you're doing. Understood. I'm going to advise you, do you have the right to appeal your sentence or conviction? I'm going to have the deputy provide you notes of your appellate right to review there. If you do wish to appeal your sentence or conviction to the court, uh, you can do so by filing an application for leave to appeal if you couldn't afford an attorney and the uh, wish to have an attorney appointed to represent you in this matter. Uh, you could uh, request that the court appoint you an attorney. I agree. He did. You, he did say it a bunch of times. He actually once forgot to say the the I am before it. It's like your truck's gonna be mobilized. Like uh, we know what you meant. You like saying that word so much that you shortened it that one time though. All right, this one's almost over. Public expense. If you did pay one of those forms out, return it to the court within 42 days of today's date. I would review that. And if you qualified, would appoint an attorney to represent you at public expense. Before you leave the courthouse here today, Mr. Chaffee, I want you to go to the clerk's office, set up payment arrangements on the fines and costs, uh, execute a wage assignment as required uh, so that those uh, <coughs> costs uh, uh, can be uh, taken from your employer. I also want you to contact the probation department. My advice to you is probably do go over to the courthouse today while you're in town mm -hmm. because you're going to have to fill out some paperwork to get the matter transferred uh, to the state of Indiana. And if you didn't do that today, you'd end up having to come back here. So while you're here, I'd go over at least uh, see if there's um, um, if you can get that set up so that you can get that paperwork to take care of. Um, Turning around, anything further from the people? Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, okay, nothing great. further, Your Honor. Mr. Chaffee, any questions? No, sir. Okay. Let me just get you. What is your current uh, address? 515. Ooh, I caught, it. I caught it that time. I'm generally pretty slow at that, but I caught it. Two years. Uh, yeah. Um, no, no, I agree. This guy should be in jail. Third DUI. Okay. <laughs> and that's Alcart? Yes. Okay. And what is the uh, uh, zip down there? Yeah, I don't think it's going to, the zip code alone isn't going to do anything, but might as well. Four, three, two. Hmm. Taking them a long time to get the address out. Yes, sir. All right. We'll go ahead and stand uh, adjourned in your man, Mr. Chair.
All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah, that guy should be in jail. I agree. No, no. Uh, anyways, last case. This one's actually out of Ohio. And what we saw the judge kind of say that I don't have to follow this plea deal. You're lucky. We're lucky. Eh, it doesn't help. It doesn't. Well, you'll see. I'm not going to spoil it. Let's go. Oh, and this is the one that has. This is the court that has that like annoying. It sounds like the mic is right by a fan. So you get that, that just constant like, I don't know, fan noise in the background. So I'm sorry in advance. It's not terrible. It's just slightly annoying. Children, text number CRD 2343 A&T. Okay, this was on the trial docket for today, but yeah. I've been told that there may be a resolution. Yes, Judge, we've had a chance. We've pre-tried this extensively, and we've come to resolution subject to your approval. And our victim is here, too, and she wants to be present. Okay, so that's... Um, is it chastity? Polly? Yes. She'll be here. She's in our office. <laughs> and there's a resisting also. Yes, Judge. We have a resolution in both cases. Okay. In my understanding, the agreement that I've reached with the state is that the domestic M4 domestic violence be uh, amended to an M4 menacing charge. Uh, he would enter a uh, no contest plea without stipulation of fact sufficient to find him guilty. Uh, saying he would enter a plea to the resisting no contest stipulation of fact sufficient to find him guilty. Uh, a fine up to the court. Uh, we talked about no community service. He lives in Logan, West Virginia now. He's been there some time. He's not in this area anymore. Uh, and he would consent to a stay away order, which the state's asking him to sign. He will do that. He has no reason to have any contact with him. Yeah, this is impending for a while. It has. And there's a children's services. Kate, we they kind of went back and forth, but we've talked and they get this resolved so we can focus on that children's services case. It does not involve this lady. It's a different. All right, Ms. Pauly, anything you want to tell me about this? I just hope that you're able to hold him accountable for his actions. Okay, and I'll need to hear more about it to, to know, because I know nothing about what's alleged to have happened. So the state's agreeing to amend the charge from domestic violence to menacing, which means theft threatening, basically, behavior, which is uh, a fourth degree misdemeanor, which is the same level of offense that the domestic violence is. So the penalty could be the same under that. And of course, the resisting is not, you weren't involved with that, but you were a victim of menacing. Your Honor, if I may interject just a little bit to give the court some understanding. Uh, Mr. Childers and Ms. Polly had been in a relationship, and Mr. Childers had been residing at Ms. Polly's residence, and uh, she decided that uh, since it was her residence that uh, she wanted to. Uh, evict Mr. Childers from the residence and she actually sought advice from a, an attorney and, and I think she got partial advice. She got the advice about the 30 day notice that you have to do before before the filing the eviction and uh, she felt she had done what she needed to do to evict him and she changed the locks. He, they got into an argument. He came home, the locks were Was this door. in Huntington or over here? Over here. It was right. here, Judge. He has a Huntington, West Virginia address on that. It's now Chapmanville, Logan? Correct. Yes, sir. So he'd been living here at her address. Yes. And so he uh, forced his way into the house and scared her to death and said things that uh, were uh, frightening to her, um, caused her fear. Uh, but he had a right to be in the house still because he hadn't been evicted and he still lived there. Well, I'm not sure I agree with that. Uh, he hadn't been served the eviction yet, I guess. Is, I don't. I, I you're don't telling me a boyfriend and girlfriend that's her house and she, he's living with her, she's got to formally evict him? I ain't buying that. No, no I don't agree with that. Yeah. That makes no sense to me. So, no, I'm, I'm not going along with that. Nonetheless, I think she has the right to say, get 
the heck out of here and don't come back. And that's what happened then. And he still came back. So tell me more. What what happened when he came back? Other than he broke in the locks that you have. Specifically, she can tell you what was said. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Well, when he came back, he took his flathead screwdriver and hammer and tried going into the door. Um, I went up to the door and I said, what are you doing? You don't live here anymore. Please leave me alone. He refused to say that he does live here and he's not going anywhere. And that the paper that I wrote out didn't mean shit. I asked him to go to his sister's. He refused. He then started banging the door again. So I went back to my With bedroom. With a hammer, is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah. yes, Your Honor. So I went back to my bedroom. I locked the door and I called the cops again. Um, Bobby, or Bob rather, their uncle, I was telling him about the situation, he had called the cops once already. I heard James come through the window and he started getting my chopsticks trying to pick the lock on my door. Um, he started banging on the well, door. Let's go back up. He came through the window. How did he come through the window? There was one window that unfortunately I didn't know the screen was broken on it and it was unlocked and he basically lifted through and opened the window and came through one of the back bedrooms. Okay. I was shocked. I did ask him how he came in. Yeah, this guy's a monster. Like, seriously, dude? Seriously? Yeah, but just wait. Just wait. It doesn't get better. Um, when I thought I could change through the window, that basically ends with that. Um, at that point, though, I was in the bedroom with the door locked, and so he started getting the chopsticks um, that I had in the kitchen, and he broke two of them trying to pick the lock on the door. Uh, at that rate, two. I opened up the door because I didn't want to break my door. He came in the room, he was in my face, he said I had a lot to learn about life, he called me a bitch, a bitch and a cunt multiple times. Um, he said that he wasn't going anywhere and I could call the cops and they were going to help him. And that he, um, he had a right to stay there and they weren't going to do anything. When the cops came 20 minutes later, I just stayed in the bed. I didn't aggravate him, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to cause any more trouble. He followed me all the way to the kitchen on my tail until we were separated by the police. That's what happened that night. Okay, and what did the police do? They first were telling me that he had a right to be there after separating us. Um, they did put him in a police car. They did search him and found his meth pipe. Um, I just want to note that two weeks prior to that happening, I found meth under my bed as well, which was another reason why I wanted to move forward with getting him out of my house because he was lying to me about it. Um, Another cop has showed up, which was, I believe, um, Deputy Riley, if I'm saying the names correctly. <clears throat> he asked me about five different times if I felt safe, and it's because he saw a lot of my anxiety and how I was freaking out about the situation because I knew that if I had stayed there, there had been a chance that it could have escalated. So they were able to tell me to write a report after asking me the questions of what happened that night, the same thing that I told you. They decided to go after him with the domestic violence. Then he was just at arrest, which Deputy Ryan is here too. Let's get him in. I'd like to hear what he has to so. say. Hello, Deputy. How you doing? I'm better than I deserve. Tell me what happened when you tried to arrest Mr. Childers. I opened my patrol car door, the rear door. Uh, I told him he was under arrest for domestic violence, and they started to pull away from him. Hey. Did he resist more than just pulling away? Or? Yes. Um, we actually ended up going to the ground, and he, he, I couldn't get his hands on the back. Stephanie Barker came over and helped me get his hands on the back. All right. Mr. Smith, anything? You want to ask any questions? Or? No, Judge. No, not a, I would have my client. He, he would address the court. Okay. He doesn't want to say anything, Judge. Okay, what was recommended? What's the recommended sentence? 60 days in jail, suspended, no contact order. Um, Fine up to the court. Yeah. Court cost. Okay, Mr. Childers, you have a right to make a statement if you want. Do you have any statement you wish to make? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Right now, this guy thinks he's leaving. You think he's leaving? Uh, judge, judge is not going to be playing with this guy. This way, it's almost over. You know what? Where are we at? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to let it play out. There's about three minutes left of it.
So I'm going to let it play out. And yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow if I don't see you in Discord after this. You guys are awesome. And Kayla, if you're still here, thanks again for the super chat. And yeah, until next time. Well, I'm not going to accept the recommendation that's being made. I think this warrants jail time. So I'm going to, on the, to be amended, I'll allow it to be amended to menacing. So that should be, what's the revised code? Uh, Twenty nine oh three point twenty two, Your Honor. Twenty nine oh three point two two. I'll impose a two hundred fifty dollar fine. Order the cost be paid. Uh, Thirty days in jail, and I'll suspend twenty five. Thanks, Skiz Rock. You're right. I never let it play out. Thank you for the super chat. I appreciate it. For 30 hours of community service. And you can do that wherever he's living. Review hearing October the 18th. Thank you so much, MB. I appreciate it. Very generous of you. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you caught alive. And thank you. And Jess. <laughs> thank you so much, Jess. Um, I just want to say you seem to be a great man, Colin. I love the chat. Always invited and kind. Thank you all for the great. Oh, thank you, Jess. I appreciate that. And yeah, the, the chat's awesome. The community's awesome. And yeah, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate it. And Sparkle Poots. Nope, not playing this stupid game. Nope, not playing this stupid game. <laughs> Thank you, Sparkle Poots. I am not going to fall for that again. Nope, not doing it. Not going to catch me doing that two nights in a row. Uh, but thank you so much, Legal Fiction. I appreciate it. Very generous. And uh, Skiz Rock. <laughs> uh, thank you, Skiz Rock. I appreciate it. Uh, 45 days in jail. And I'll suspend 40. Another five, five days of community service. So you've got a total of 10 days of community service. Judge, did he do that in the Logan, West Virginia area where he resides? If it's a legitimate yeah. charity or work with uh, probation here? He can do it there for a legitimate charity. He can do it for the court if they'll allow it and they report to us. He's commanded in the hands of the sheriff. We need to know his current address for the protection order, too. Man, you guys are killing it tonight. Thank you, Jedi. Well, out. Thank you, Jedi. <laughs> Jedi, hope you are you getting some more chicken nuggets tonight. <laughs> Chaotic good, sir. This is Wendy's. 
Uh, thank you, Chaotic Good. I appreciate it. And Jay, for the requ the requisite seven paws. Um, yeah, I don't know. That might have been seven pauses. Oh, and Sparkle Poots. Adam Miller, Skills Rock, don't tip. Old lady. <laughs> you guys are all awesome. You guys are all awesome. Um, yeah, I, I think you're right. I think he said you, you're serving 20 and 40 are suspended. I think you're right. I think that's what he said. <laughs> I thought it was Arby's. I thought it was Arby's. Thank you, MB. All right. Thank you all for the Super Chat. There's a, just about right when I hit play, it's going to pop up the intros or the outros. So thank you all. You guys are all awesome. Hopefully see you on Discord. And yeah, I'll see you all tomorrow. Until next time. Bye. James, what, what, what's your current address down in Logan? Kidders snuck one in. I don't know how you did that. Thank you, Kidders. I appreciate it. <laughs>